ஹலோ ஆல் வெல்கம் பேக் டு ஆ வீடியோ சீரீஸ் திஸ் அ செகண்ட் செஷன் ஃபோ ஆ வீடியோ சீரீஸ் ஆன் நானோ எலக்ட்ரானிக்ஸ் இந்த ஃபஸ்ட் செஷன் வி டிஸ்கஸ்ட் வாட் இஸ் பேரல் ட்ரான்ஸ்போர்ட் அண்ட் த வேரியஸ் எலக்ட்ரானிக்ஸ் கேன்ட்ரிங் மெக்கானிசம்ஸ் ஐ ஹோப் தோஸ் கான்செப்ட்ஸ் ஆர் கிளியர் டுடே இன் திஸ் செஷன் வி ஷில் மெயின்லி கவர் டூ டாபிக்ஸ் த ஹோட் எலக்ட்ரான் இன் பேரல் ட்ரான்ஸ்போர்ட் ஆஸ் வெல் அஸ் வில் ஸ்டார்ட் with the basic concepts of perpendicular transport so to begin with hot electrons so let's start uh, guessing right from the word hot electrons so electrons which are hot so hot means uh, there is some increase in temperature right or there is some increase in energy so what happens is in certain kind of uh, transistors field effect transistors our electrons are accelerated to very high in uh, kinetic energies due to the presence of an electric field and as a result of this high acceleration the electrons get very high energy a uh, energy which is too high or which is even higher than their thermal equilibrium energies now what happens because of that due to this acceleration by the presence of this electric field the electrons energy distribution will have a temperature which is higher than the crystal lattice and thus the electrons are called hot electrons see the electrons get hot or get very high kinetic energy due to the presence of the electric field that's it and when their energy is higher than that of the crystal lattice we call such high energy electrons as hot electrons now for this hot electrons their effective uh, temperature te i represent my effective temperature as t suffix e and their average energy is e bar so the relationship between e bar their an ever average energy and their effective temperature is given by e bar equal to 3 times k into te divided by or 3 by 2 k into te where te as we have said it is your effective temperature k is the boltzmann constant and e bar average energy now see uh, see when uh, it was observed for aluminum gallium arsenide gallium arsenide the hot electrons had a uh, velocity which has reached a much higher velocity compared to their uh, velocity values in bulk gallium arsenide so when we come to modulation doped hetero junction structures the hot electrons had extremely higher velocity compared to their equivalent uh, velocity in the bulk material in the pure bulk material and this difference got larger as the temperature uh, decreased the difference got larger it was also observed that uh, we uh, see we have different energy bands right e1 e2 e3 the quantized energy sub bands the velocity of your electron was highest for the lowest energy band compared to the second sub band which means electrons in your energy level e1 had a higher velocity compared to your electrons in your energy band e2 and this can be uh, see graphically represented as this as you can see that the lowest sub band had the highest velocity right that is e1 your energy band e1 and the bulk semiconductor gallium arsenide has a velocity which is too small compared to your aluminum gallium arsenide gallium arsenide interface energy levels so the lowest sub band had the highest energy and the next sub band equal to uh, for n equal to 2 the energy band e2 their energy level or the velocity was less compared to the sub band e1 and uh, for the bulk it was too small right next we shall discuss a specific 
effect that the hot electrons uh, tends, uh, tend to exhibit in the case of a quantum heterostructure and that is called real space transfer. So uh, again as we can uh, interpret from the heading real space transfer. So there is a transfer of something in the space provided and all we have to transfer is electrons. So it may be some kind of electron transfer. Let's see that. So uh, this RST, our real space transfer uh, normally arise in quantum structures, quantum heterostructures, which means again, I'm coming back to my favorite example, the aluminum gallium arsenide and gallium arsenide. Now, if the energy of your hot electrons is very high, which means they can't uh, stay stable in their particular location, they tend to escape from the well. So uh, we have this particular quantum well. Then the electrons have a tendency due to their extremely high energy, the electrons have a tendency to escape from that well. So considering our uh, aluminum gallium arsenide and gallium arsenide. The electrons are transferred from the undoped. We have the gallium arsenide which is nearly intrinsic which means it is undoped. So electrons may get transferred from the undoped gallium arsenide to the surrounding aluminum gallium arsenide layer. Which means, see the electrons are being transferred from gallium arsenide, which means gallium arsenide has a maximum mobility. So, electrons are coming from a region of extremely high mobility to a region of lower mobility. And who controls this uh, motion or this transfer? It is a voltage between the source and drain which controls this motion or this transfer. Now, as a result, what happens? As a result, there is a negative differential resistance in the IV characteristics. I can show you the IV characteristics, right? So this is the IV characteristics. What happens? This is the IV characteristics. Now let's see what happens. We have this gallium arsenide region, aluminum gallium arsenide region, again the gallium arsenide region. So we have a modulation doped heterostructure. So normally the transfer happens from aluminum gallium arsenide to gallium arsenide region. And the electrons are trapped in this quantum well, right? That's what we have, we are familiar with. Now what we are saying here is that these electrons have extremely high energy. Because of which they jump from this gallium arsenide region to the aluminum gallium arsenide region. Again, from this region to the aluminum gallium arsenide region. Due to this transfer, there is a decrease in current. So far, the current has been increasing linearly because the transfer is from aluminum gallium arsenide to gallium arsenide. So due to this electron motion, there is a uniform rise in current. That's when suddenly the electron started in this region started getting extremely high energy and they started jumping to the aluminum gallium arsenide region. Naturally causing a decrease in current. So this region where the current reduces from this, this peak point is called the negative differential resistance or NDR. And this NDR has like beautiful properties. Because of this NDR, we can create new kinds of devices such as the resonant tunneling transistors. We shall discuss that soon. Okay. I hope the concept is clear. What is real space transfer? There is a transfer of electrons from the undoped gallium arsenide to aluminum gallium arsenide. High mobility gallium arsenide to low mobility aluminum gallium arsenide because of which there is a decrease in current which is, which is obvious, right? Okay, so what happens here? So uh, normally in devices such as, you know, mode fits, uh, the source drain region uh, and the, even the gate length, they're very small because these are nano structures, right? So this, uh, the distance between the source and drain as well as the gate length, they are very short in the range of nanometers, no doubt. As a result, 
are electrons they get easily accelerated with a small application of an electric field the electrons get accelerated without suffering any collision and this kind of electrons are called ballistic electrons what are ballistic electrons the electrons that those don't uh, undergo any collision or they, those don't undergo any scattering i guess we discussed this in our first module uh, when we came to discuss the characteristic length and so so ballistic uh, electrons or ballistic transport is nothing but the particle transport without any scattering or without any collision so in this case in the case of a mod fit since this uh, source drain distance is too small our electrons are easily accelerated in the presence of a very small electric field itself and the electrons get transmitted without any collision or scattering hence we call them the ballistic electrons and uh, these electrons can reach a very high uh, velocities of 10 raised to 7 per centimeter so they uh, they have a um, very high speed right and since these uh, ballistic electrons have extremely high velocities we call that phenomena as velocity overshoot effect and this effect is used by the fvt to operate at higher frequencies so uh under hot electrons here uh, see we are learning a new terms right what is ballistic electrons what is velocity overshoot the real space transfer so these are very important terms uh, for a uh, hot electrons i guess this concept is clear right so we just discussed hot electrons hot electrons in parallel transport so we have seen what are hot electrons uh, high temperature high kinetic energy high velocity so and there we studied the real space transfer there we discussed what is ballistic electrons what is velocity overshoot effect so i hope these concepts are clear right okay so if so we'll move on to the next section the perpendicular transport so so far we have discussed about parallel transport uh, their scattering mechanisms and later we discussed the hot electrons in parallel transport and we, now we are starting the new kind of transport that is the perpendicular transport so as we have uh, discussed in the earlier slide what is perpendicular transport it's simply the motion of your carriers perpendicular to the planes of the potential barrier carriers means your electrons so when your electrons are moving perpendicular to your interface or perpendicular to your potential uh, region then that kind of a transport is called perpendicular transport now uh, see basically this kind of transport uh, the basic mechanism is tunneling right so because you have to pass through your potential barrier because the movement is perpendicular to your potential barrier which means the only mechanism is tunneling so the most common mechanism in perpendicular transport is tunneling so when you want a particle to move through your potential barrier the particle's wave function i hope you remember wave function the particle's wave function must be continuous Uh, when we derived our schrodinger equation we have seen wave function and their derivatives so when your particle want to pass through the potential barrier the particle's wave function and its derivative must be continuous and when these are continuous they can get transmitted as well as reflected which means the wave function can pass through the potential barrier as well as they may get reflected by the potential barrier two kind of uh, phenomena may take place there and the tunneling through this potential barrier can also lead to the negative differential resistance which we have just discussed in the case of uh, real space transfer right 
So we are going to see all these things in detail in the case of perpendicular transport. So what we have seen here is that when your electron moves perpendicular to the interface you call it perpendicular transport. In this case you want your wave function to be continuous and the most common mechanism is tunneling. So we will see one tunneling mechanism the resonant tunneling. Now the, see we are familiar with the concept of tunneling right when the electrons can move from one region to the another to another region through a barrier we call it tunneling right. So what is resonant tunneling? It is simply a kind of a perpendicular transport which is more prominent in nanostructures and uh, because of this resonant tunneling we can we can uh, design high frequency devices and why we will see that so. Now again our favorite example consider our gallium arsenide and aluminum gallium arsenide region. Now let me take you to this figure right. So we have this aluminum gallium arsenide region, gallium arsenide region again the aluminum gallium arsenide region. So uh, here gallium arsenide region is nearly intrinsic right and aluminum gallium arsenide is slightly doped. When you have a voltage V1 such that your voltage V, your applied voltage V is equal to 2 times E1 by E. When your voltage V is 2 times E1 by E, here what happens a Fermi level coincides with our energy level E1 right and in this situation there is a beautiful tunneling mechanism. So here we have filled electrons they can see a set of energy uh, level here so they tunnel from this section to this well passing this barrier as the electrons are moving pretty well along this region we have a beautiful increase in current also right. So when a voltage is 2 times E1 by E the electrons in the gallium arsenide region can tunnel through the aluminum gallium arsenide region and reach this well causing a very high increase in current. Now when your voltage is further increased what happens when your voltage in, uh, becomes greater than 2 times E1 by E what happens? Here we can see that a Fermi level goes above your energy level E1. What happens so? The electrons get transmitted not in this energy level but beyond that which means we can see a drop in current. Let us see what just occurred initially the voltage was 2 times E1 by E the Fermi level was just aligned with the energy level E1. So there was a smooth transmission of electrons causing a smooth increase in current. Now what happened your voltage has increased your Fermi level has gone above your energy level E1 due to which the electrons they do not find energy level to exist here the tunneling decreases so does the current. I hope this is clear right and this region as we have said gives you negative differential region. Now from this peak value from this peak value of current the current has decreased. Now with respect to this when the voltage is further increased what happens this barrier decreases. When the voltage further increases the barrier decreases due to which the current further increases because the barrier as the barrier width decreases it is easier for the electrons to tunnel across the barrier causing a increment in current right. So in the IV characteristic after the maximum value the slope of the curve just became negative showing the existence of a negative differential 
resistance. I hope that's what I have mentioned in this slide, right? Moving on to the next one. So to determine the transmission coefficient, so when the transmission of electrons or the tunneling is maximum, the transmission coefficient is one or else it's less, right? So to find the uh, transmission coefficient, see these are the previous things what I have just discussed. So we are determining the transmission coefficient. So uh, the transmission coefficient is normally given by Te equal to Te into Tc. So Te is nothing but um, the transmission uh, energy of the first level and Tc is that of the second level, right? And it is given by T naught square divided by T naught square plus 4 R naught cos square Ka minus theta. Now what are these terms? T naught is your transmission coefficient, R naught is of course the reflection coefficient, A is the well thickness. I hope you are familiar with A, B and D. A well thickness, B barrier thickness and D A plus B which is the periodicity. So again A is the same term which is the uh, well thickness, quantum well thickness. K is your electron wave number and theta is your phase angle. The, uh, see in this figure we can see the dependence of transmission coefficient with respect to your energy. So here we can see that at each energy level when E equal to E1 your transmission coefficient is 1. When E equal to E2 again the transmission coefficient is 1 and at E3 again your transmission coefficient is 1. So at each specific energy levels the transmission coefficient is T of E is 1 showing maximum tunneling. Now what happens as your energy increases? We can see that the width of your energy level is increasing, right? And what about the transmission coefficient? The peak transmission coefficient, it's decreasing. These are the things that we can interpret from the dependence of T of E versus energy. Right? So we just discussed what is perpendicular transport. So we know that in perpendicular transport tunneling is the best mechanism. So we have been discussing about tunneling. Right? So uh, we saw how uh, resonant tunneling is prominent in this heterostructures and what are the tunneling mechanisms we just saw that and we saw the presence of a negative differential region and it is due to this negative differential region we can use uh, these uh, resonant tunneling transistors for very high frequency device applications also. So I hope this session is clear. If any doubts please let me know. Thank you.